Twig. Umlauf got his 1,000th kill in that set. What can you say about him and his progression? Uh, he's uh, an amazing player. He really is. Uh, he's pretty much been dominant from the day he walked in the gym, and uh, really glad he's on my team. And how was the blocking and serving for you so far? Well, I think we're serving good, not great. You know, uh, Joshua had a couple good turns. Nate really hasn't got it going yet. Um, and our block's pretty good. I think we got six or seven here through two games, had four in the first game. And we, we finally established a middle attack a little bit. So our offense also, we hit 600 in that game. Finally got a little offense going as well. Good luck, Coach Wade. Thanks. Back to you, German Steve. Thanks, Aaron. We appreciate you putting on the halftime show tonight. And there's Umlaft. Let's take a look at the statistics from set number two as Hawaii really opened up the offense there. No, they did. They played really well that second set, hitting 600. I mean, 484 is a pretty nice hitting percentage, but when your opponents are hitting 600, yeah, something's going wrong if you're a Cougar. 20 kills to Hawaii's 14. That's kind of an interesting stat with Hawaii having such a nice hitting percentage. BYU trying to be a little more aggressive at the service line with eight service errors to Hawaii only having three and only one ace. Here's highlights from the first two sets. BYU on the first one, 25-20. Yeah, BYU, they came out much the same fashion they left last night, firing on all cylinders, doing a nice job blocking, but offensively they were huge. They hit over 500 again in that first set. But then in the second set, Hawaii, not wanting to make an early night of it, came back and played some pretty nice volleyball of their own, and they've done a great job tonight blocking, by the way, against the Cougars. And, uh, you know, wouldn't go away in that second set, and eventually a couple of costly errors from the Cougars and uh, some pretty awesome hitting there from Jonas, and they close it out. Maybe the biggest number tonight, aside from hitting percentage for Hawaii, is the fact that they are out blocking the conference leader and third in the country, BYU, six to three and a half. Shane Welch has done a nice job with two solo blocks and two block assists to go with two kills. He got very little from the middles tonight and the biggest difference so far. Yeah, that Hawaii would, into the net. That would account for the uh, being able to hit 600 when uh, BYU isn't able to throw a good block up against him. Quinton Smith. Quick to dive. Rob Stowell off of Umlauf. And you can tell on night two, like we mentioned, always a totally different game from the previous night for a couple of reasons. But you see the Hawaii coaching staff making the adjustments necessary to take a set. Yeah, and that's you mentioned earlier that it's always interesting to see on the second night how the teams are going to come out. And Hawaii definitely has done their homework on this BYU team. They've got uh, they've got a much better read on their offense and offensively for Hawaii as well. Those guys are, are able to hit around the block quite a bit better tonight than they did last night. You see the coaching staff taking uh, copious notes on the bench for Hawaii. Stowell with another one. Stowell with 13 and two already of the first three for BYU. I think what shocks me about that swing from Stowell that he consistently has that line open is typically when you see a set that's that flat and fast, the hitter just is just trying to hit angle just to keep the ball in play. Wow. Speaking of Rob Stowell going line, saw an opening there and went after it and got it. The passer must have just been leaving a little too much room there. Wow, that's a tough serve. BYU's second ace of the night. First for Stowell, 16th on the season. 4-1. <laughs> now look at Scott Hartley. Hartley with his first nice. swing, and he bombs it away. Yeah, that was a great swing down the line. Saw the opening and went after it. Hartley, a 6'4 freshman, replacing Hunt. Had a huge solo block in set two, and then comes out here with a kill. Dyer way out. Seven on the night. First of the set for Hawaii. 
Taylor Sander. 12th of the evening, first of the set for Brigham Young. Sander with three service errors, Stowell with four, Dekron with four, and then Tavanaugh with one. Dekron, good pass to Kelly Akamoa. Wow. The big <laughs> and Umlauf able to dig it, and then a triple block on Walker. Great dig out of the back row from Umlauf. Just kind of held his ground. Popped that ball up pretty well. Unfortunately, the hitter going right into a triple block. Welch. Welch is on a mission tonight. He's yeah. not going to be a guy that's going to put up uh, 15 kills, but he's being very efficient in the middle for them tonight, especially compared to last night. Offensively and defensively, he's getting it done. Three of four hitting the ball. Overpass, Walker, that one pounded and out. Hawaii point, 6-5. Kelly Akamoa going for the Kong block there, the one-handed block. Unsuccessful, tooled way out of bounds. Hartley. Smith, dug up by Umlauf. Umlauf wants it. Diapo, and that too far for Stoa. Didn't go after it after it went past the BYU benches. Mike Daniel and Ryan Boyce were, uh, had quick reflex to get out of the way there. Yeah. Rob Nielsen's at least got a heads up. He's standing. He can move a little bit easier. 6-6. Six, six. Big to Sanders. Umlauf's all over it. Stowell. That oh. one passed. Oh, called into the net. Oh, that's an unfortunate blocking error for Hawaii. And after the fact, Stowell leaned into the net, and Zemiak saying, well, what about him? Pointing at Stowell. Well, again, I don't think uh, it's a net violation unless it's the top of the net, which Rob clearly was not in, but I don't know. That's, uh, I think, and plus the ball was already down at that point anyway. Yep, so after the fact. Walker! Ruth by Stowell! Holy smokes, that block was straight down. A low ceiling in there on that swing. Nice move by Stowell to go back into the angle. Kelly Akamoa going way out, and look at Umlauf get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's an athletic move there to get out of the way of that ball. You that was like, a, a, that was like a, a shortstop coming over at second base to get out of the uh, sliding guy stealing the base. <laughs> That's impressive. Stowell! Boom with the dynamite! <laughs> Stowell showing he's got some angle too if he wants it. Nice turn there, cross court. Just up so fast. That's undiggable. Apparently unblockable. 9-7. Stowa with a match high 15 kills. Sander has 10. And then Umlauf with 13 on the other side. Another error from BYU. Normally that's where BYU has the best home court advantage is the altitude, they're used to serving the ball. And when they don't have that, it really neutralizes a lot of what their home court is. That does. And, and still the opposing team if they're struggling to, to serve at that altitude, that kind of does still give them a little bit of an edge. A lot of these teams, like these guys, you know, Walker, what did he have? 22 service aces coming into this match, or into last night's match. Nice turn down the line by Walker. Walker with eight kills. Hawaii only had two hitting errors in the second set. They already have three, but still hitting 300. The Cougars. Four for eight, no hitting errors. And you see the service errors. Eight more than Hawaii coming up from sea level. Nine, nine. Stowell is on fire. 16 to lead the match. He's a hammer. That's why we talked about him both nights. 
He's a definite leader on this team, both in intensity and in just being a plain old gamer. Umloft, number one in the country in kills per set, adds another one to his total. At the beginning of the year with BYU, we put the visual pressure of our broadcast on the shoulders of Taylor Sander. He's been outstanding, but the real hitting leader of this team is Rob Stowell. Sander plays a very good number two role, and in the future, he'll be the guy for sure. But it's carved itself out a little bit as the season's gone on that this is Rob Stowell one, Taylor Sander two. Yeah, and, and it was hard to know going into this season if Taylor was just going to come in and take over, and I'm, I'm sure that was. A lot of pressure for a freshman. Sure, sure, but you know, you know, guys coming in that are used to dominating, a lot of times they're going to just eat that up, and it's just going to fuel the fire. And if Stowell's not on this team, he's for sure the number one. What a, oh, yeah. a one-two combo as he's dug up by Walker. Umloft off hands, the front right there. Stowell triple blocked. Coming up, dug up by Walker. Point BYU. And Dyer taking a while to get up. They have twisted that sprained yeah. ankle. Take a look at the dig by Hiapo. Looks like Dyer's okay. He's gonna stay in there and Futi tubbing up, pumped up. Dyer was shaking up. Let's we'll see if he's okay. No one out. Why dodging points. a bullet there? Uh, 16 to 8 in service errors. What are they saying? I can't hear what the crowd's saying. I can't tell either. Ace by Dyer. That ankle looks just fine. His eighth of the year. Fourth just, most on the team. It's interesting. Sometimes when you have a bit of an injury, you're feeling pain somewhere. It, it occupies your brain, so you're not thinking about what you're doing. And you tend to even do a little better than you normally would with pressure on. Then again, I could be wrong. That first serve was pretty money, though. 13-12. Let's see how Taylor Sander answers back. Joust! Futi Tomino wins that one. Zemniak pretty much it has it has had his way in the last two nights with anyone but Tomino. Yeah, that ball was too high. That was. There was no way he was pushing back against that block. Umloft, BYU is late in getting over there. Even if they're on time, it's tough, but when you're late, tough to stop number 10. Yeah, that was a page right out of Stowell's book right there. Showing, showing angle all the way, and then last second, turning line. Umloft, he's had time on the German junior national team. You'd think would uh, get a shot on the senior national team one day at this rate. That one out from Stowa. 14 so. 14. Comes in as a freshman and is a first team All American. Leads the nation in kills. Now in his sophomore season, hoping to take Hawaii to the next level. And as Charlie Wade said, I'm glad he's on my team. Yeah. The prone cross court now. BYU wheels coming off a little bit here from the service line and hitting the ball. Timeout on the court. BYU is struggling right now. Hawaii is just taking advantage of everything. They're keeping the pressure on, serving tough, blocking well, playing tough defense or offensively. In this set. BYU hitting 333, both teams hitting 333. But BYU really has struggled on the service line. Craig Fryer sends an email, says, Hi, Jeremy, we heard you mention the regular game for tomorrow, but will either the men's baseball or women's softball games be shown on the UE TV this weekend? Thanks, Karen Harriman in Utah. The answer is no, we will get to baseball uh, April 5th. And April 7th, those will be our opening broadcast. Uh, we've got rugby this week, uh, but yeah, no no baseball this week as they uh, they played yesterday and got an 8-4 win against San Diego State, and then 
today's game was rescheduled. And then uh, you see Long Beach State next week, and then baseball versus Utah Valley and Air Force. And softball will be a little bit later on. So we will have a couple of softball broadcasts for you. Glad you're on BYU TV. Thanks for the email. If you uh, have a question or comment, feel free to email us at tvsports at byu.edu. That's tvsports at byu.edu. What's the biggest difference you've seen tonight from Hawaii as they've tied it up at one apiece and are uh, pressing for taking a second set here in the third? You know, it's a little bit of everything, but definitely they're blocking. I mean, they're, BYU was having their way with them all last night and even the first set, but they, uh, they turned a corner and they're blocking pretty darn well tonight, but their offense is a little more crisp. Passing's pretty decent. They're able to kind of run plays they want to and stay in system more. But I think just all in all, the aggressiveness of this team is just different than it was last night. For Craig and Karen Fryer, our first softball broadcast will be April 21st, and we'll bring you three and three days. Ellen popped up high. Hartley with the play there. Tough bump for Walker. Way out. The BYU. Got an easy one there from Hawaii. If you're just joining us, I'm Jerem Jordan with Steve Vale and Aaron Nilsson in the Smithfield House in Provo, Utah. Third ranked BYU, eighth ranked Hawaii. Cougars swept the Warriors last night. Warriors tied it up in the second set, one apiece. Here we are in a competitive third set. Boom loft. Wow. wow. Oh, and tug up. Costello. Boom loft. And that one out. This is how good Umloft is. You have an outside hitter on the other side with a very open lane, a middle blocker that could have could have hit that. But you go back row, back set to Umloft. That's how good he is. Yeah, and he got it done. It looked like Stoll was on that second ball as well, but unable to contain it. Sander with his 11th kill. Makes it 16 to 17, Warriors in front. BYU and Hawaii knotted up at six apiece now and blocking. Taking a little bit of time to wipe up the floor here is Joe Kelly Akamoa. We'll serve it up in a second. The junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. Played with the USA Junior National Team, was their setter. The most 7 to 09. Trouble there. One pass back. Tavano would have slammed that down. So well dug up by Umlaut. Triple blocking out. This guy ceases to amaze me. He continues. Yeah, he is a he's a special player. I mean, he's just not not just a big guy, but he plays with a lot of poise and is able to see that block so well. A dangerous hitter. Has passed the ball really well. The cross. Nails. 18-17. Hawaii really putting on the pressure here on BYU in night two. They did it in the third set yesterday as BYU got the sweep, but tonight totally different. Hartley mishandles it. Free ball coming. Sander! The Sandman delivers! 18 apiece. That was set up pretty well from the Cougars. BJ Hiapo calling for that free ball makes a perfect pass. Look at Sander fly right past the block. 18 apiece. Timeout on the court. Sander with 12 kills on 18 swings now. That's a nice timeout from Charlie Wade, noticing that the momentum was starting to shift a little bit in this building. Calling a timeout, even though they're not down, they're tied up at 18. Calling that timeout to kind of slow the Cougars down, let his guys catch their breath. See how they come out of the timeout. Well, Carl McGowan, we mentioned last night in our trivia question, was inducted to the ABCA Hall of Fame, and uh, McGowan, longtime coach at BYU, was the club coach for a long time, became the head coach when they turned into an NCAA program in 1990. And uh, as we chronicled last night throughout this season, one of the greats of BYU history in the stands tonight. 
That's pretty cool. I, that, that was a fun moment. I remember watching that. That was pretty special to see BYU get their first national championship. Hector LeBron. Yeah, there were some nice players on that team. Noah Hartsock and his wife Kendall in the house. Noah on the men's basketball team who were defeated last night in New Orleans against Florida in overtime. And then Kendallin, she's the libero, a walk-on on the women's team. Got an email from no doubt, undoubtedly a member of the Sander family. Always emailing us. We appreciate that. So I think it's that if Taylor gets more sets than Rob, he would be right up with Rob and kills. For sure. Uh, he has 98 less sets coming into the match. And uh, Sander in no way, shape, or form inferior to Rob. But just in terms of the first option, it seems like on this team now, turns to be Stowell and then Sander right there. Let's call him one and one A. How about that? Yeah, that was in no way a slight on Taylor Slant, on Taylor Sander. I mean, he's, again, we've said it before, he, he might be the best as a freshman ever to walk through the doors of BYU. I mean, he's, he's an amazing athlete. And I missed what happened right there. I, I think it looked like Hawaii was calling for a mishandled ball from BYU, but like Walker just uh, expecting a block to be there, just kind of hit that out of bounds. The 1918 Cougars, triple block! Another note on Carl McGowan, he actually also helped Mike Wilton back when he was the Hawaii coach as a consultant with UH a few years back. That one from the uh, sports information office at Hawaii, we appreciate that. Yeah, I know Carl. I think who, are McGowan tight. hasn't helped UCLA. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Umloft with another one. It's a nice swing from from Umlauf to come back off of that block. Deep corner of the court. That's just a, a lot of character to go after that swing. 2019 for the home team. Zemiak, the Slovenian, getting a Masters. Ooh. That one just out in Hawaii. Thought that was in. That's a tough call there. I, we don't have the angle from where we're at, but the line judge, no question is mine. Stephen Hunt, who's back into the game, grabbing Zemiak and get back here. Jeff Robinson in. Josh Walker with the lane and got it. Walker with nine. 21 20 in set three. I think this is more of the Hawaii team we expected to see this weekend. A team that's battling right there in it all the way. Oh, Umlauf with the block. Hunt blocked it out, 21-21. Stephen Hunt got yanked for a little while, but records his fourth kill on his eighth swing. I like that Zemiak went to him. I mean, it's been all Umloft, you know, all night. Probably. Whoa, that was a bomb of a shell right there. That's a nice serve. And the bomb shell comes through with the point, 22-21. Make it 18 for the leading hitters on both sides in Stowell and Umloft now. And that's a bummer if you're if you're Walker, because he absolutely hammered that serve and doesn't get rewarded for it. This is the second time this set they've had to come out and mop a certain area of the court here. Someone is uh, Someone sweating ripping out there. quite a bit in the same <laughs> spot. 22-21. Michael Taxter, excuse me, Matt Cheap in. Defensive specialist on the back row and an untimely service there. What are they timely, I guess? 22 apiece now here in set three. <laughs> Brennan Dyer, who has an ace in this set, will serve for the Warriors. He's got a pretty nice serve. Looks like Taylor might be giving him a little bit of room on that cross court again, but he doesn't go for it. Right up the libero. Sander way out. What is going on with the Cougars? Hawaii putting the pressure on, on the serve, but BYU passing it, and then bombing it out. 23-22, timeout on the court. We'll be back in a moment.
Jonas Umloft is a talented volleyball player. He's a good student, and oh yeah, he can juggle as well. <laughs> this is before the match. <laughs> Fun stuff from the Germanator. Check in with Aaron for more on what BYU said in that huddle. It was very simple from Coach Nielsen. He said, it's just what's killing us is we got to attack the court. Just attack the court. Back to you. Taylor attacking, unable to find the court. Hunt with the tip and blocked. The eighth oh, block of the called. match for BYU, and but a net call on BYU. Oh, uh, down has got somebody fishing. Set point for Hawaii. Hard to tell from that angle. Need the net cam. Sager is waving the Dikembe, Dikembe Mutombo finger. Set point for the Warriors. Wow, what a great serve. Dyer has been awesome in set three. Blocked. Hawaii with the chance to put it away. Umloft oh. on the back row and BYU with another block. 24-23, still that's set a, point for Hawaii. It's a tough break for Hawaii. And I'm looking over at Charlie Wade. He thinks the same thing I did, that the ball dug by BYU could have very easily been called a lift because it looked like Joe Kaliakamoa Moa thought somebody else had it. The last second just kind of stuck his arm out there and popped it over, but it stuck just a little bit in his hand. Uh, apparently not enough. And BYU dodging a pretty big bullet there. Both teams have cooled off from the second set percentages hitting wise. 308 for BYU, 296 for Hawaii. And for the match, Hawaii hitting 370. BYU 429. Umloft and Stowell with 18 apiece. And then Taylor Sander with 12. So set point number two for Hawaii as they try and go up two sets to one in Provo. Yeah, they've been putting some great pressure on the Cougars all night. Take another look at what might have been. Well, it was a little before that. The ball where, uh, where Joe popped it back over to give Hawaii that chance. So the fans get on their feet. Normally reserve, only reserved for when it's a set point, but right now BYU trying to will BYU to a point here and set up a uh, best of two. Uh, BYU's got one of their best, if not their best, jump server back there right now. See what kind of character he's got. Service That's error. Rough. That's rough. Hawaii takes set three. They're up two to one. Hawaii in that same position, match point, just bombed their serve, and BYU unable to get it over the over the net. Hawaii will look to take set four and take the match. We'll be back in a moment with the fourth set in Provo.